For more than 30 years, Robert Edward Auctions has been the nation's premier auction house, specializing in sports memorabilia and trading cards. With significant experience and expertise in all major sport, non-sport, and Americana collectibles, REA has helped clients achieve record-breaking prices for their items and has done so with a reputation for integrity and transparency. By actively partnering with collectors and enthusiasts throughout the entire process, REA has created the hobby's most trusted forum for selling high-quality collectibles. Go to robertedwardauctions.com for more information on how to buy or sell in their next auction. I'm Danny Black. And I'm John Newman. Welcome, welcome to, to Card, Card Menches. Well, hello, and welcome to episode 20 of Card Menches. I am Danny Black, and I'm joined by my mensch of a friend, John Newman. What's going on, buddy? Morning. Yeah, episode 20. Uh, who would have who would have thunk it? Did you say morning? I think you're you meant Modelo. It's it's morning somewhere. That's what right, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, can, I can you believe I nailed that? Yeah, you did. Uh, that's that was like the perfect game of openings. I'm, I'm done at this point. I I'm I'm, I'm good yeah, for the good night. Good night, everybody. We'll see right. you next time on Enjoy episode twenty one. Um, first of all, we got we got lots of uh, hellos to catch up to. Uh, Ruben, wow, no hats either one of you guys tonight. Ruben came down to a last minute decision. I'm not gonna lie. Orlando, I see Orlando's here. So let me give you a little. It's, if I don't wear a hat, it means I got a haircut. When I'm wearing a hat, not not a hundred percent. I don't want to say that a hundred percent across the board. But it, on, on like video, if I'm wearing a hat, that means my hair is getting a little bit too long, and I don't want to like do. A, I just put the hat on. Again, not a hundred percent, but usually. So I got my haircut yesterday for the first day of school today. And uh, so I, I'm not rocking the hat. I have plenty of hats. I posted on Instagram. I don't know if you saw that, Danny. I counted up how many hats I have. I kid you not, I have 70 hats. That's crazy. It is crazy. Like, who needs 70 hats? Um, not I. I have two. I yeah, have two that I, I have two. I have two that I wear. I've got like the old ones you keep. My wife saw that post and she's like, "You think about getting rid of some of those?" And I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> Well, you also you also cleaned up. Uh, I did a lot of like maintenance, like metrosexual stuff. I know. Yesterday, and my my last like weekday off, except for Labor Day before uh, school starts, which was today. It was weird, you know. When I woke up today to go to school, when the kids aren't there yet, but as teachers and TAs were there, kind of prepping for their arrival. And when I woke up today, it felt like a Monday going back to work. Um, and so now it's Friday. It's sort of like I'm in a really good mood because you wake up thinking it's Monday, and then it, it instantly turns to Friday. How can you not be in a good mood when that happens? Well, see, I had the reverse. I thought last night was Friday night. I worked late and woke up and realized today was Friday. <laughs> yeah, I, it just felt like a Monday. Last night felt like a Sunday, knowing I had to go back to school. And then it's like, yeah, it's three days. And that not just a regular Friday, but a three-day weekend Friday with Labor Day. And, and I'll say it at the end, but, you know, I, I hope everyone has a safe uh, and, and great uh, Labor Day weekend. Have fun and whatever you're doing. Uh, I know there's some card shows and uh, cookouts with family and, and all that kind of stuff. Yep, and if you're heading to Burbank in Burbank, hello, say hi. You know, definitely uh, drop in the chat. Um, I know John said hello, but a hello shout-out to Dylan as well, Mookie, Chris, uh, Orlando. I think we're trying to catch up on everybody there. Ruben, Mookie, Chris. Uh, we we said people twice. We didn't charge you extra for the second one. So it's still right. Free, so. Um, and uh, so I want to talk about tonight's topic because because it's an interesting one. Uh, oh, there's a topic. I thought no, we were just going to talk about Labor Day and my hair all day. Well, we are. Uh, <laughs> look what we started now. I also got a haircut yesterday going to a card show in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Right. By the way, I, people don't know this. I lived in Fort Lauderdale for like two and a half years back in the day. As Johnny Carson would say, I did not know that's that. Where, that's, well, that's where Jason Veritek hit a home run off me to go to the Little League World Series. I did know that, yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Can we move on from the Paul Mitchell haircuttery segment? 
<laughs> Super cuts. Remember that? Spot. They're not. Maybe we should get the nose. I don't know if I didn't go to. I don't know if Paul Mitchell's still in business. Are they? Yeah. I don't have hair. I don't have hair. I haven't shot for hair products in 20 years. <laughs> I'm um, getting less. Like, I got the LeBron James. It keeps going back further. You, no, 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 no. Mookie said you got sick flow. Nobody well, I do, flow let me put it this flow. way. I do the best with what I got. Like, I, I make the best out of it, right? It's like you have some ingredients, and you make, like, you cook some soup up, and it comes out okay. That's kind of the analogy I'll use. All, all, all I'll say is if I have a sick flow right now, there's usually a prostate exam involved. <laughs> um, Dylan says, reading the catcher was a spy, Danny. Oh, making me making me happy, Dylan. My Moberg uh, is right there. So uh, when you finish the book, tell me what you think. And if you don't buy a Moberg uh, within 24 hours, I'll be shocked. Um, he might have a Moberg. You don't even know. Nobody has a Moberg unless they know the story. That's the whole. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Well, he had he had six home runs in his career. It's not like he lit the league on fire. Well, that's my point. No, no. Who collects backup catchers like Jason Veritek? You know, Jason Veritek was. Don't get me going. Listen. Besides taking me deep, he he was in the Little League World Series. He was in the Olympics. He won a World Series. I, I know I, I left something off. I think there was like four things. College World Series, Little League World Series, Olympics, and Major League Baseball World Series. So Jason Veritek did pretty well for himself, and he's got me to thank, I believe. Yes, taking you deep was definitely the highlight. Uh, uh, Ruben says, maybe I should grow my hair out to don you to at next year's national. I'm close in age to both of you. Ruben, uh, having more hair than me is is, is not uh, is not a goal in life. You can do better. All I'm saying is we we have more hope for you than that. <laughs> and I get it. And that's the other day. I always get my national haircut about a week or two before the show. Oh, all right. Can we? Can we? Uh, I'm going to try to get us back on track. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I feel I, I feel like Ernie Johnson trying to steer the NBA uh, show. They were eight now. eight minutes in. And we haven't right. talked about the topic. Well, here's what the topic was supposed to be. We'll see if we get there. <laughs> the, the topic was supposed to be uh, that we really want to talk about how to buy cards without going broke, funding your own hobby, or, or other ways to, to, to really uh, get into your collection. Um, I, I, I invested into that because I am a personal collector, so I think there's a side to that there that I really want to talk about. Um, I feel like I get to talk about business a lot, and it's nice to talk about cards in my own collection and how I fund that. But, uh, you know, do you want do you want to talk about your collection? Because a not a lot of people know um, that, that all, all the different sides of your world as a collector, you know, dealer. So I, I don't know if, the, you know, I don't mean any offense by the term, but – and. Um, but I'm hobby schizophrenic, and so I have a split personality. I have a, a dealer inventory, show inventory as a dealer, and I have a personal collection. Anything you really see kind of behind me, on the walls, and that that's not even everything, but definitely all the stuff on the walls does not go to shows with me, and then you can't see it on camera, and, I, I'm, you know, it's it, I'm not going to move the camera. Um, but over there, I have metal racks. Uh, one metal rack is still PC stuff, and the other metal rack is all show, like graded card, uh, carrying cases, regular cards, shoe boxes, monster boxes, sealed wax that goes to the show with me. So I have one metal rack with show inventory, another metal rack with stuff that doesn't go to the show. The stuff on the walls is personal. And so... It, that's why I say it's kind of dual personality. I have a, a show inventory and stuff that I have no intentions to sell that doesn't go to the show. And I know a lot of dealers, Danny, will take even their PC stuff to the show with them with sometimes the, the thought process, well, if I can sell it and upgrade or trade cash and maybe I am i don't think along those lines. So it's, everything I bring to the show is available for sale or doesn't go or doesn't go. But can I can I say that that for some people is their system, and I just want to acknowledge it. Some people kind of blend the two and they use one to fund the other, and they kind of mix yeah. the books there. Not your system, not my system personally, um, for the most part. But um, 
that is for some people. And even when I got the Jackie Leaf, you know, a lot of people who were even locally who listened to the podcast or follow me knew I got it. And the first show I did after acquiring it, I had people come up to my showcases and like, where is it? I'm like, I didn't bring it. It's not for sale. I'm like, oh, I wanted to see it. Like, you know, and that's the, that's my that's my point is I don't bring PC stuff with me to to the show. I know other dealers do. You know, I've had other dealers say, listen, I'll bring it. And I'll just price it at a price where it's probably not going to sell. I'm going to be over comps. I don't even want to do that, Danny, because then it takes up a space in the showcase for another card I could have out that's really for sale. And so I don't do that. I don't like to be over comps. It's, you know what I mean? Um, sometimes I can rub people the wrong way. Uh, I'm not saying I've never done it ever, but I try not. Yeah, and, and I know that you don't, and, and we're going to talk about this also, um, is, is breaking um, not with a breaker, but personally. Um, neither one of us do, does a ton of breaking. Um, the little bit I do just to most of that goes into the PC or to the kids. Um, if I, who am I kidding? I've never hit anything. So I couldn't tell you what I, where it would go if I did hit something. So I used to open more newer wax, current rat wax, if you will, about, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And you learn, right? You learn by trial and error. You learn the hard way that you really don't with the rare exception, you, you don't really come out ahead on that. And I've talked about this on Sports Car Nation. Uh, at one point, I had a $10,000 credit card debt from open just opening like new wax at the time. Uh, yeah. And I, I really took a step back and said, that's ridiculous. Just think of all the vintage I could buy with, with you know, a decent vintage with ten grand. I obviously paid that credit card i zeroed it think how much bad vintage vintage you could buy with 10 yeah yeah a lot so (laughs) i learned i learned by trial and error and and that's why i don't have a problem sharing else like right we you know content creators like to share all their wins hey i bought this for 200 i sold it for 1500 you know pat myself on the back and that's great but when I when I one of the things I, I will pat myself on the back after saying that is I'll tell you about the losses. I'll tell you about the stupid things or the, the mulligans I uh, would, you know, do over if I could. And that that's one of them uh, running up a 10K credit card bill on, on opening newer wax. And I just learned, you know, it's like Pavlov's experiment. Right. You keep you keep going into the dark alley. And you get hit over the head with a club. At some point, you're gonna start stop running into the alley because you know what's coming. That's how it was with newer wax. And I'm not saying I don't open it at all. I just pick my spots and nowhere near what I used to do. You and I, um, uh, I'll show, we we did a uh, we broke a box for fun at the national. Yep. Just 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 for, just for uh, uh, shooting a giggle, and you know, and. Neither one of us went into it expecting to make money on that box. <laughs> yeah. No, and it, it was fun, and it didn't break anybody's bank. And, uh, you know, that's that's how you need to approach it. But people, it's it's like a lottery ticket, man, you know. Some people could go up to the front counter and just buy a couple of them. And then the other people on Friday payday, they're buying 150, you know, different scratch offs and that's where you get that's the difference right and i used to be the 150 scratch off guy with with wax not with actual scratch offs and now i'm the you know give me a two or three and i'm good and if i win awesome if i don't it was fun for you know the hour it took or whatever you know so all right so how do you fund your personal pc i'm i'm a little I do some, I don't want to say weird stuff. I do some different things. I do a dollar envelope. So every every day when I get home, any ones that are in my pocket, any singles, I take out of my pocket and put into an envelope and forget about it. And when I get 50, I, you know, I put the band around it and I put it in the safe. And at the end of the year, what I do, when I say end of the year, you know, what I, my end of the year now becomes the week before the national. So not December, but in July, I take all those ones and I go to the bank and I get bigger bills and turn them in. And so this year, I'll, I'll be very transparent. This year, I had six hundred fifty dollars 
in July from those ones. My highest year was thirteen hundred. One year, I actually had to. I don't know what. Well, you were in better shape. You were you were dancing more. And got more singles that <laughs> Yeah, I was better looking because I was probably seven years uh, <laughs> younger, and the ones ones were flowing a little bit better. Well, one year was thirteen hundred bucks. I don't know what happened that year. Uh, just a lot. Maybe where I was shopping. Instead of giving me a five, they were like, hey, I'm out of fives. You mind five ones? Yeah, fine. That's that's all spends the same. So it varies. It, it averages about what, what it was this year, six fifty to eight hundred dollars. And when by doing that, Danny, you don't even notice it. You're a couple bucks a day. The other thing I do, I think a lot of people do this, is they'll just put money aside, right? In general, right? You have kind of a almost like a Christmas club. Obviously. Uh, a little bit different for me is when I do a show as a dealer, if you have a great show. Obviously, some of the money's got to go back into buying new inventory and replenishing. But I had a couple great shows, and, and I got to put some money just towards national or a trip or whatever, I, you know. So that's 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 how I do it. Um, but there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. That's just what uh, works for me. Um, and, and, and the other thing... Here, I don't know how it is with everyone else. I have to deposit so much a week uh, for for things that have to be covered, you know, on the domestic front. Anything after that deposit, uh, and the rest is kind of pocket money, play money. And so, depending on how the week was and, and that sort of thing, I can, I, I'll put some of that money away. So, uh, and this year, uh, I'm going to try to do even more of that uh, leading up to next year's. Uh, national. Now, here's the other thing, you know, and I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. You know, Mike Summer came up with the, you know, self sustaining hobby, mm -hmm. and it's probably the best way uh, to do it, quite frankly, right? Don't spend money you don't have. You can get in trouble. Um, I, you know, i.e., $10,000 uh, credit card bill that I, uh, I did pay off. But I will say this as a dealer, I, I sometimes, and I did a show about this on Hobby Quick Hits. As a dealer, and this can be as even as just a collector, even if you're not a dealer, if the deal is really good and, and you know, I'll still, you know, buy the deal and like whether I take an advance on a credit card, I've done that. You know, if it's a deal and it's, you know, uh, I bought a $10,000 collection, let's say, because I knew it would be worth three or four more times that to in resale value. I might not have had ten thousand dollars at the time. Maybe I had whatever, and I had to offset the difference via credit card. I I will do that knowing I'm going to be fine. You got to be very confident where you're at with that. I don't kind of preach to everyone should do that because I don't want someone to. I, I'll well, feel you're, a little you're, bit you're guilty if someone did that. And the they said, John, I took your advice, and I I didn't. You know, I didn't. It didn't pan out. I'm just willing to take. I'm willing to take that leap, uh, just based on my experience. You know, I did my first show in 1987 as a 15-year-old kid, so I know kind of where things are at and and if the deal's good. So I've I went on my show and said, "Listen, for me, I've spent money I didn't have." You know, when I had my store in the early 90s with my partner, we would we took out a loan to buy you know, cases of wax that we needed for the store, knowing we would pay it back and then have a profit from it. So there are times when I will advocate for spending money you don't have at that moment. You just got to be really disciplined and really careful. There. I don't want, just be careful. If you do that, be sharp enough to know like you're going to come out okay. Well, I think we're going to come back around to that a couple times. Um because the, the, the fund, the hobby for yourself and self-funding is one of the biggest things um, that I think a lot of people use as a technique to stay within themselves. But I wanted to uh, touch on a couple comments here. Chris Ramsey says, uh, what's your thoughts on Ronald Acuna hitting 30 homers and 60 steals, guys? Um, I, I, I don't think he's done. I think we could see 40-70. I think he's going to be the MVP. Um Oh, yeah, I, I used to work for the Atlanta Braves, and I'm a diehard Braves fan, so um, I might be a little biased on that one because uh, of my love for the Braves. But uh, Kuno, to me, is having an all-time great year, first player ever, 30 and 60, and I think he'll be the first player ever, 40 and 70. So I just wanted to 
answer that for Chris. And in fact, uh, where is it? It's over the other shoulder. There's his gold, uh, gold rookie there. Um, Ruben, uh, take this for John and I both here. Um, Ruben asked a great question. To save money, is it better to buy ungraded vintage than go and get it graded? I understand the authenticity aspect of buying it already graded. Um, John, you want to hit this first or you want me to tackle it? No, I'll take it because I just did an episode on, on Hobby Quick Hits. Uh, one of my favorite, you know, I, I did a Q&A. Uh, Dan, as you know, I'll do that sometimes. Yep. And one of the questions I got asked on that Q&A was like, what's one of my favorite things to do in the hobby? And there's, there's a lot. It's hard to pick one. One of the things I personally love to do is buy something raw and then in turn submit it for grading and, and, and do well on it with your eye, right? You kind of, you know, we all look at a card and say, man, I, you know, a raw card in this case, say, I think if I submit that, it will get this. Now what can I buy it for? And do, is it going to be a win for me, right? And one of my favorite things to do is buy raw vintage and then in turn get it slabbed and and do well. And I, I'll say this to Ruben, if if you got a good eye and, and you're good at it, you can really do well by by but you're better if you're good at it you 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 you'll be more successful buying raw vintage than buying it already graded because you're paying you're paying that that price is baked in already um you you know the the caveat there Ruben and everyone else is that you got to be careful with trimming recoloring um whether something's fake or real, I just, you know, I do SGC bulk subs and, you know, not my cards, but I had someone who subbed, you know, a Pete Rose rookie and it came back authentic, recolored. Um, a Jeter came back, a Jeter SP, same order, different person, but same order, came back uh, minimum size, not met. I know Jeter's not necessarily vintage where the Rose is, but I use those two as examples where you could get burned, right? If you paid for a Jeter Raw thinking it was going to get a 7 or 8 and it came back as minimum size not met, you lose. If you buy that Rose, depending on what you buy it at, maybe that guy got it in cheap and he's still okay, but if you bought it thinking it was going to get a 4 or 5 and then it comes back as authentic uh, color added, you probably lost some money on that deal. So, uh, I do well with that, uh, but you, you've got to sort of have a knowledge base and, and an eye. But if you're careful uh, and do some research, it's it's a great it's a great way to sort of upgrade. Come on, you buy it sort of the basement level, and you go up a couple floors uh, in the elevator, and you feel even better uh, when those successes happen. But be careful because a lot a lot of the the dealers who have a quality raw card or know know what they have. So if it looks too good to be true, j- just 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 take that into consideration. Uh, no, Let me sell a mint ten for the price of a mint, you know, of a poor one, uh, just because it's raw. Here's a question for you, Danny, and everyone in the chat or listening out there, right? You're at a you're at a show. You're not set up. You're at a show just as a consumer. You're looking to buy raw vintage, right? And you go to a dealer's table who, just like you said, has raw vintage and graded vintage. Do you say and be honest? Do you say, man, does this if he has vintage graded and then he has this vintage raw, this raw has to be not up to snuff, or he would have sent it for grading. It would it wouldn't be raw. What's your what's your thought process? If I don't know the dealer, I'm more hesitant. If I know the dealer, I'll ask them the question. I'll, 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 but what are they gonna say? Do you think well, you expect the so, dealer to say, "No, I just have, I just got those, and I haven't decided to send them in yet"? Which actually may be uh, honest truth. It could be the honest. If I have a relationship yeah. with them, yeah. sometimes they'll say, "I picked it up last week in Cincinnati at that show, and I haven't gotten home yet to do a submission, so I just am keeping them in the case." Are they telling me the truth? I don't know, um, but you know, I, if I have that relationship, I trust it a little bit more. However, if it's raw, I'm going to look at it 16 times over, um, and maybe I'm a natural skeptic, but I, I am a natural skeptic. All right, so here's another question, and what's the etiquette here? Do you, 
what do you think? And you've set up at shows. I set up at shows. What do you think when someone like looks at a raw card and then pulls out like a little loop, this thing right here, to oh. look at to look at a card? What it does that? What do you think about that? Is it is it bad etiquette or is it okay? I'm I'm old school where you just ask permission. Like, do you mind? Do you mind if I put a loop on this? Um, and I find as long as you do that, most dealers are comfortable with it. And if they're really not comfortable with it, that's all I need to know anyway. You think you should ask though? You think you don't think you you think you have to ask before doing it? I think it's good manners. Just like if you're going to take a picture of somebody's cards, you know, I I, I always ask, do you mind if I just take a picture? Um, I do think it's respectful, but that, that that's from being on the other side. I, of it doesn't actually doesn't bother me if someone does it at my table. It's fine if they're going to buy a card, right? Um, I don't, I don't do it. Like I'll look at the card with my naked eye and just just try to do the best I can. You know, I do wear, I do have glasses. So usually, if I go to show, although I I didn't wear them at the national, they were in my backpack. I never pulled them out, but I will put glasses on to to maybe get a, a better view. Especially of a, a, a vintage car. So what's um, the difference? Not it really isn't. It doesn't bother me. I just feel. I guess it's more me. I just feel a little bit odd if I take this out at some table and I mean, get a car. It's a little pretentious, you know, when you're at the dollar box doing it. But you know, if you're buying an expensive car, it's a great point here by Orlando too. I want to put this on the screen. Yeah. It's okay to pull out a loop. Dealers do it. When purchasing, you're right, and I have it at the shows where I'm set up. Yep. Um, uh, do I use it every time? No, but have I used it at all? Sure, I have. And um, so, yeah, I guess turnabout is fair play, right? It doesn't. It actually doesn't bother me. I just feel a little self conscious doing it when I'm looking. I, I don't know why. If you ask me why, I don't. I don't have a, a like a. I just. I don't know. I'm not as comfortable of doing that as doing other stuff or just put my glasses on uh, and, and looking, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like if someone does it when I'm set up, I don't, I don't think any less of them and, and they're, they're entitled uh, to do so. I just tend not to do it for whatever, for whatever reason. Do you feel comfortable if, if somebody takes pictures of the cards and they want to send them to somebody? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. It's still my card, right? I mean, yep. if, how do we know that doesn't lead to a sale down the line, right? Maybe that somebody is at the other end of the show looking for that card. And the next thing I know, both of those folks are in front of my table and we're talking about a purchase and, and, and negotiating a, a deal, right? So I don't mind pictures. You know, someone's, someone told me, I said that once on my show and someone sent me an email job, but they could post your graded card on on eBay or something like that, and as theirs, and so you know, it's fraud. You know what I mean? That's that's well, the that's card's their still problem, mine. And that, yeah, that's yeah. somebody else's problem. <laughs> and that's why you see a lot of people when they post like graded cards, they'll blur out or black bar the serial number. I don't even do that. Like if you want, like if you're that's what you do. That's a that's an indictment on yourself that you steal other people's photos and post the cards uh, as your own. I'm more worried about the card getting stolen and then it's really your card that you stole. I don't care if you steal the picture of it. And if you want to do like deceitful things, that's, that's an indictment uh, on, on you. I ultimately still have, have the card in, in my possession. And, you know, we know the old thing, right? You can coin it. Uh, you can do a lot of different things to prove that you actually have uh, possession of the card. If, if you need to go uh, that far. So I'm not a guy that will block out, my barcodes or uh, I don't mind. And, and, and I will say this, most people are very polite and will say, can I, sir, can I take a pic? Do you mind if I take a picture of the card? And I'm like, go ahead. And even if they don't ask, it doesn't bother me. But it, the fact that they, most people do, it's just a, a, a next level of politeness. So I, I, you know what it is? I think it's handling the dealer's cards. I'm always more deferential to the dealer. Just, uh, you know, Anyway, um, one of the things that, that I'd like to throw out there, and, and let's say, John, you asked me, how do I buy cards without going broke? And I would answer. I would say, you know, John, I do have ways that I buy cards without going broke. And one of those ways is I like to buy prospects and make a couple dollars 
you know, on a couple cards and take that and turn it into a vintage single. So Mark Vientos, uh, the great Met power hitter, uh, and a couple other guys this year uh, ended up getting me some of the cards at the National. Um, and and, and that, that's a system that I have fun with. It allows me to still buy Bowman prospects and and, and the new cards that, that I like. And then I can turn it into what I ultimately want to keep in my PC. And that's all separate from, from any other work or dealer or anything else. That That's just totally PC. Um, and that that's one of the ways that I that I self fund it. And I, I love it. And and here's the thing, man. I will you know, I'm happy to sell any of the new stuff and, and put it into vintage for the PC. I mean, I'm I'm waving that same pennant and we're we're on the same team and, and I do that too. Maybe that you know, I think that for me, I do a lot less prospecting than I used to do, especially on the Bowman uh side of the house, but you know, sort of your show, right? My show inventory, let's not that it's bad. I have a lot of nice cards for sale uh, in the cases, but they're cards that I'm I don't consider PC items, right? So you sell a nice a nice show item for a good chunk of change that potentially becomes hey, I'm gonna go and, and purchase a, a vintage PC card that I I couldn't afford previously, but now I sold that card. Guess what card I'm gonna be selling soon. Who's that, Mauricio? Ronnie Mauricio. You know yeah. why? Because that's I don't need. There's no connection to me. You know. There, I get it, but I, I really listen. I really like him. So just no. uh, you, you know, sometimes. No. So listen, there's it's a double edged sword, right? Sometimes we yep. sell uh, too fast too. You can kind of you not necessarily lose, but you maybe don't come out as far ahead uh, as you as you can. Well, I'll show everybody the uh, 2010 Burl Bowman Sterling uh, Lindor rookie I am sending you. All right. There you go. Another great a great point by Stuke here. I want to put his comment up, too. This is yeah. – this is, and then I'll tell a little personal story. So I get some deals when I ask a dealer if they have something I'm looking for and it's behind the table. The more apt to give me a better deal on something that's not on the table. Great point. I have a sign on my tables when I set up at shows. Uh, it's 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 nicely printed. It's in like a stand up uh, kind of a holder, and it says, "Please, if you're looking for something, please ask." All my inventory is not out, and you know some people probably read it and still don't ask, but some people will ask, right? And say, "Hey, I, I don't see any in your cases. Do you have any uh, so and so? I'm looking for Barry Larkin." Throwing something off the top of my head, right? And I have Barry Larkin because they're just not out. I, I only have so much room, right? And you can make a sale. And Stukes is exactly right. I'm probably not not a hundred percent across the board. I'm more likely to give a better deal on something that's not out because it didn't kind of make the cut, right? Well, that's you set up exactly the show as a dealer. Yeah. It's kind of like a draft, right? All your best stuff you want to get out there, and this is like it didn't make the cut. And so if you can sell something that's not out there, you're, you're going to be more apt to, to give a, a what do you want to, whether you want to call it a discount or a, a little bit of a concession there. Um, and I, so I have that sign. It's a great point by Stukes. I have a sign on my table that says, if you don't see something, please ask. Not, not everything is, is out invisible. So, and uh, I love when people ask. The worst thing I can say is I don't have it. Uh, sorry, you know, and people are are fine. Oh, that's no problem. I figured I'd ask, and it's all good, right? Um, so it's a great point there. That uh, exactly right. Always, you should always try to ask. You just because mo well, I I don't know any very few dealers have all their stuff on the table. Maybe the you know that one showcase dealer that has like one showcase on the table and Recard. like all blank space, all <laughs> blank space. I went to a show. I went to a show this weekend here in Syracuse at the NBC Suites, and one of the deals, he had a whole table, six, eight foot. He had one showcase, you know, with 40 cards out. Probably that's all he's got because he's got, like, yeah. five feet of table space blank. So that might, you know, that that's the exception uh, to the rule. I, I wanted to, like, man, just throw something out there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Well, I wanted to play this earlier when Ruben asked his question about – uh buying raw and then getting it graded because, you know, I, we know that John uh, likes to get his stuff. Experience, quality, consistency, and the quickest turnaround times in the grading industry. 
We are proud to partner with SGC Grading. Check them out at www.gosgc.com. Yeah, and speaking of grading and speaking of shows, right, we're talking about kind of both. Uh, I got a show coming up here September 10th. It's my first one in like four months, uh, and that's at the fairgrounds here in Syracuse, uh, New York. I will have my two tables with my own stuff that we kind of we, we dabbled a, talking about a little bit, and I'll also have another table uh, bulk subbing for SGC. So if you have, if you're in the area or in in Central New York, and you want to get your cards back quick, they're still they're they're back to running about seven to ten days. Just got an, an order back, probably eleven days to be fully transparent, but that's that's pretty quick. Uh, and uh, so I'll be there September 10th uh, at the New York State Fairgrounds. What's up, Brendan? Um, now, when, I have a question for you. When you buy. Do you typically buy graded, or are you buying raw for your PC? I I'll buy both. Um, I, I when I buy when it's when it's when I buy raw, it's it's with the hope that it probably can be graded. Now, have I bought raw and then I get home and then I really take a, a deep look at it and like I'm not going to submit it? Yeah, that happens. And I'm usually still at a price where it's okay. It's not the it's not the end of the world. It's not a deal. Why well, you pull out the loop? Um, yeah, well, I I don't like to do that. It's goofy, man. I I I don't I I'll do it some. Even as a dealer, I don't I don't do it a hundred percent of the time. Just some. I think the bigger the deal. Like if it's an expensive card and we're talking and I'm talking about buying it, I really need to look at it. Right. We're talking about a smaller deal. You know, I'm I'm a little bit let my guard down so more a little bit more. So I guess that's that's I'll use that as sort of an excuse, but. Um, I, I buy, I bought both, you know, I'll, I'll buy, I tend to buy when, like when I go to the national, as you well know, and, and we room together and a lot of the deals I got, we're there at the same time when I buy like hall of fame, uh, you know, graded, uh, rookies, I, I tend to buy them already graded. Well, have I ever bought them raw and sent them in for grading? Sure. I think that's becoming harder to do than we think it is. Well, I don't know if you agree with that. I'm also going to make a comment that you and I both bu- will buy graded for the card, not the grade. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. So, no you doubt. know, to, to kind of contradict ourselves, you know, I, I'm buying the best looking card I can buy at the best price I can buy it that I feel comfortable that it's authentic and, and, and real in whatever fashion I can I can do that. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, I mean, we 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 talked a little bit about the K line deal. We both bought the dealer. I'll make the story the the, the clip notes version. Uh, we were both kind of looking at the same table. Uh, we both had sort of a K line rookie on the list. The dealer, the dealer, mine's behind me as well. The dealer had three Al K line graded rookies, uh, a six and two fives. Uh, you know, me and Danny kind of whispered like, "Hey, let's see if we get a deal if we." We each buy one and get sort of a combo deal. And the two fives were, and here's the perfect example of that. We wound up getting the, or, or no, it was a, a, it was a six, one, five, and a four. No, it was two fives and a four. Two fives and a four. Two fives and a four. And the one five and the one four were better than the one five. And so we got the five and the four. And those were the two best cards out of the three, even though two had the same grade of a five. Like the four you got is better than the five we didn't buy, and I'm not saying that because it was our kind of a combo deal. It's because we both. It's funny we didn't even like comment. We both looked and kind of came up with that consensus without any kind of conference yep. or, or huddle. And so that sometimes you, the grades can be overrated too, and you got to keep that uh, in mind as well. I've seen, you know, I have a one and a half Jackie. I saw three or four twos. At the national, that I wouldn't trade my card for straight up, well, and that's the, I'm just being blunt honest. The one that um, I think we saw a handful of it was the Aaron rookie. You were yeah. seeing you were seeing grades one, two, you know, higher than yours. Um, I wouldn't trade them. I wouldn't trade my. Yeah. I have a three and a half. I wouldn't trade my three and a half for for a four or five that I saw. That um, people say, "How are you crazy?" Just. Because it, they were like way off center, they had print marks on them, and like truthfully, they were probably overgraded where mine's undergraded. And so, 
Um, sometimes you just, uh, you know, that's the, that's the way it is. So be careful. You know, a, a grade is subjective, right? Um, how many times have we seen a gem in 10 and you look and it's got a ding corner, right? It's been always on social media, right? Those things occur. That's why it's it's not a foolproof system. This comment uh, from Carolina. <laughs> I love for great. That's a good comment. I love it. Graded. It's true. But I do that. This is exactly. I mean, I sent you a picture today. That's smart. Did I or did smart. I not send you a picture today? Yeah. And uh, because I. And I know it's smart. I think. I think smart. I'm. And again, I'm not trying to say some people. Smart. I think smart people do that, right? You get the best deal. You're paying a, a raw price, and and that might grade well, and you, you got in at the bottom. That's just smart business. That's just smart economics. I don't even want to say business. You made it. You may not be in business. It's just smart economics. It's just smart buying uh, on 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 a, a buyer's part when they think along those lines, right? And um, you know, it, it, it's it's. I try to do that. It's just I don't know. It's getting a little bit harder to do. I, I mean, this still, still can do it. It just I think it's getting a little bit more difficult. I right. think. It's getting a little bit more difficult, Danny, because more people are doing it, right? There's more competition. Uh, well, there's also more graded cards than there ever have been, and, and this is what Brendan uh, Ryan makes the point, uh, because the grade's only an opinion and not always done with care, with care as grading volume rises. I don't even know if it's an issue of care as much as it, it is an opinion, and it is different companies, and it is different graders, and it is grading in 1999 – you know, versus 2023, or, or, or you know, the technology, the, the 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 what's important for the companies when they when they grade, how much importance they put towards surface versus centering. I mean, all these things. If you're not familiar, these have all changed over time. So you know, it, it's something to be aware of. You know, also look looking at older graded cards, you might find some real steals because people pass up on older labels. Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing, you know. I sometimes I'll look at an older label, and maybe you can get it can work the other way too, right? They just uh, you find a deal. Maybe that was under, you know. Yep. There's undergraded cards that are graded. I mean, if you're, I, I'm not a big cracker and resubber. I've done it once or twice in my whole life, but sometimes that opportunity is there. If you're looking at a, a card that's graded and it's, you know, a three or four and you ask to see it and you take it out, you look at the front and back and he's like, man, this like looks like it should be higher. Maybe that's where you take the loop out. Maybe there's a hidden crease. I'm not seeing a wrinkle, something, right? Uh, but you look at it real closely and you don't see any, like, I just think this is undergraded. Crack it and resubmit it. I'm not a big cracker and resubber, but there's nothing illegal about that. It's not well, trimming or restoring. And you're just... You're, you're, you're paying for the service again, that's all. And I'm going to show this because uh, this was the card I sent you earlier. I think this looks better than a four. Well, when it's that tiny, anything looks better. From a Well, that's my secret. <laughs> that's my secret. That's how I stay happily married. <laughs> Jeez, um, geez, let me hang on a second. Let me get this out. Get, you might want to get your glasses on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but... But I think that looks better than a four. And, and to, to the point of, you know, is it undergraded? Um, I I think it is, you know. Um, no, all joking aside, you sent me, you texted me the picture, and I seen a bigger version yes. of that, and, and you're right. So I'm just joking here. But, yeah, sometimes graders, it's an opinion, right? You know, uh, so, you know, sometimes my wife says, hey, how does this shirt or this look right and i say oh it's great maybe it isn't <laughs> maybe it's just good <laughs> i over i overrated the, the shirt or whatever you know so uh you know uh you got to keep that in mind and that works both ways right a card can be undergraded a card can be over it's the k-line story is the overgrade yeah. on the one five to me they had no business the five we left in that case to me, had no business three. being a five. Yeah, it could have been a three. So, yep, your four was in better shape. I put them side by side, and the five I got was in, in considerable better shape. So, you got to well, take all that stuff. Yeah, into I was consideration. Four. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> Gum stains <laughs> used to be an issue on vintage, but there's a remedy for for that now. Apparently, I'm yeah. laughing at Ruben's comment too. Is that is the card a grower, not, grower, a, not shower. a shower? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, now I can do my like I can do my Costanza like it's cold, Jerry, in here. Right, the, the water's cold. <laughs> All right, that's enough for the shrinkage. Uh, my wife, uh, my wife's hair is authentic color added, but I'll never tell. <laughs> uh, that's the, that's it, you know. So, is there's deals to be that that's a double edged sword, right? A card again, a card can be given a grade that's too low for, for really what it is, and, and a card can be overgraded. And I've seen it both, I've seen it both, and I think most people have. And we probably most people who have a lot of graded cards. Probably own both of those, quite frankly, myself included. Yes. Ruben is having a good time. Uh, <laughs> for those of you yeah, I, go in my, I go in a hot tub, so there's no issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, I'm not, not even responding to that. Okay, let's let's move on. There are still deals at flea markets and antique shows. Yeah. Uh, they can be cheap uh, or marked 10 times value. Uh, yes, and yes. Um, yes, and most importantly, they are willing to negotiate very heavily. A yeah. lot of times, it's just rotating. Another, inventory. another great point by Stooks, and this is something I want to start doing a little bit more of, Dan. I don't know if you get to do this. You know, I do a little Uber uh, after school and and the two weeks before school starts again, and so I drive by like antique shops, and I, I never stop, but I want to start just running in there real quick and just saying, hey, do you got any sports cards? And just see, right? If they're overpriced, like Stu says, and sometimes they are. Uh, I have one in one. It's not even in business anymore. A couple years ago, there was one near where I play softball. So before the game, I actually went in there and, you know, it was overpriced. It was like an 88 Fleer Glavin rookie, you know, Mark 20 bucks and that sort of stuff. And and you, you you'll run into that. A lot but of you've seen price. people post. Yeah. You've seen people post like, hey, I got this, you know, pre-war for five bucks. And so there's there's people maybe not knowing what they have, or, or you know, maybe it's a, a variant uh pre you know, there's so many different you can get so many steals there. I'm gonna start go making a point to just even if it's real quick, just going into some of these vintage or antique stores and just asking them, hey, do you have you know, just, just for saving time, like Hey, do you have any vintage uh, sports cards? And uh, or do I, I'll just say you have any sports cards in general, and see what see what they say. If they say no, I'm like, okay, thank you, and away you go. If they say yes, you see what they got. And like Stuke says, it's probably going to be one way. There's no in between uh, with those, right? It's it's going to be like crazy overpriced, or it's, or you might get a deal. Or what you said, Danny, is very true. Uh, the, the in between might be someone who's Sort of price right, but willing to 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 negotiate, especially if you're buying multiple cards. Yep. And uh, Brendan, uh, I mean, allow allowing for certain vintage and centering uh, the way is practical, but the lack of hobby standard universal grading scale leaves a ton of those opinions in limbo. Yes. Uh, just getting back to your comment before, uh, th they're they're between the companies. Uh, between the scales, there's lots of opinions. This is why John and I were saying, uh, you know, not it really is the card. And um, and and a, and a universal grading scale, while on paper would be a great thing, we're never going to see it. No. And so it's like talking about a unicorn. And there's yes. some people that probably believe that there 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 really are unicorns. Um, but they, I can don't I give away secrets? Are, can I give away yeah? secrets, everybody? Sure. I have cards from SGC, and I have cards from PSA. And guess what? I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's I. That's I. Have, I have I have both of those, and I have a couple of BGS. It's the card. Then. It's the card. Yeah. You know, I mean, listen. You know, I tried crossing one card over, and it didn't cross over. Other than that, I've never tried to cross a, a personal card over. Um, yeah. And uh, I like both grading companies. I, I like having the cards, and you know that that to me is more important than the number or uh, 
which company graded it necessarily if, if it's with and, it. and here's another great comment if, if i may what, what mookie makes here mookie. right here he says uh you know he bought a card in an sbc and that's not a mistype uh not sgc sbc slab the other day it's definitely undergraded never seen an sb slab before but tried crossing over yeah right listen gma i make jokes about him good morning america grading right Yep. Um, if you see it, if you you know, I don't I don't see many vintage cards in GMA slab, but what if you found one, right? Uh and and you look at the card and it's it's it looks like a great crack it out of there and send it to a legitimate and rep uh, and no offense to these other grading companies, but what I call the big four at this point, three and a half almost now, but you know, um, you know, send it to one of those where you're more comfortable having that card in your collection, right? Nothing wrong with, again, you're buying the card. You can always slice, you know, crack the card out of whatever case it's in. In this case, SBC. I don't know what that even stands for, um, but uh, maybe they're hoping people think it's SGC by accident and slip up and buy it. I don't know, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a thousand. People think I'm, I'm kidding when I say this. There are legitimately a thousand graded card companies. Not legitimate ones. They're just legitimately a thousand graded <laughs> card companies. Okay, uh, people doing it in their basement. Black Mamba, uh, your mother's ugly grading card company. Whatever. They're There's fantastic. A thousand of them. They're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Then they don't don't let the name throw you off. They're okay. But <laughs> but you know, there's a thousand different grading card companies other than. It's like waiting for a universal pop report, you know. Right. So if you're looking at, you know, Acme Grading Card Company's slab, and there's a nice card in it that someone, for whatever reason, subbed, and it looks nice, and the price is right, why wouldn't you buy it? It doesn't have to stay in there permanently. That's just a, a vessel that holds it. It's it's no, you know, it's just a, a, a more beefed up soft sleeve or semi-rigid. Get it out of there. Sub it to your grading card company choice, SGC, and and uh, you know and uh, subliminal message. But right. but I'll joke. You know whoever you want to, and get it. You know, uh, and you might be surprised when when you do that. And uh, I've never. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, but it's it's you know. But it's it's something to think about. Brian Ryan says, "If you build it, they will come." Well, how about if you grade it, they will they will ship. Uh, yeah, one day, you know. And someone says, "How do you know there's a thousand grading card companies, John?" Because one day, uh, I went on the the internet's invented by Al Gore, and I typed in grading card companies. And if you're listening literally, to the podcast, I am shaking my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> literally, a thousand different companies came up, and uh, you know, I kind of went through and just. Kind of just started counting and and counted mm -hmm. and then kind of did how many pages there were and did the old kind of grid mapping and there's about a thousand. Ruben, <laughs> Ruben, if you, Ruben, if you can't work hard and party hard, baby, this is the only way to do it. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, well, it always makes me think of your Mean Joe Green commercial. You know, uh, that's why I'm a, one of the reasons I'm a Steeler fan to this day, man. Was that Mean Joe? Uh, green commercial and Coke. And listen, I don't drink as much soda as I used to, but Coke is my like Coke and RC Cola, which you don't hardly find. Uh, I don't like anymore. killing my teeth, but when I do, it's Coca Cola. Oh, yeah. That, well, I always joke, right? When I was a kid and, and collecting cards with my friends, they wanted my gum and I wanted their cards. So I give my gum and get extra cards. So I didn't get the cavities from chewing gum, I got the cavities from all the soda. I was drinking, celebrating all the gum I was trading for cards. Yeah. <laughs> There's another way to grow, grow your collection in the hobby. <laughs> yeah, and I had the cavities to prove, uh, you know, that I like soda. All right, John, what's the next card or type of card you're uh, actually targeting? Anything uh, that, or is it just, while well, you have a show, yeah, it's going to be more of the dealer, yeah. John? Yeah, I wanted to, you know, going to Nash, I wanted to get a Seaver and or Clemente rookie. I probably wasn't going to be able to get both. Uh, I wanted to get one. Uh, they were a little bit over comps on those particular two cards. They didn't run into a, a deal there. So they're still on my list. It's not like burning. My my mind's not burning about it. It's just, you know, it just when the, the, the time's right or the price is right. Um, 
You know, I, I often get asked, as you know, you know, now that you got your Jackie, what's the next Grail card? I really don't have one. I think the Aaron that I wound up getting was kind of the next one after the Jackie. Um, so I don't necessarily have another Grail card. I think you can't have too many Grail cards because then it kind of defeats, you know, saying it's a Grail card. So I have cards I, I, I kind of want. Not kind of. I do want. Um, but nothing that, like, I'm going to go, you know, either overpay highly or, you know, you know, talk about spending more than you have, do that either. So it's just when I run into something. And I want, what you know, my two big purchases were the Gibson, the K-Line rookies, and then I, uh, the last one was the Frank Robinson uh, rookie that I, I picked up. And, and I was good. You know, I didn't get to see where the, the Clemente, but uh, I was good. It was a great show. You got your Mo Berg in the K line, and uh, you chicken, know, is, and all the is, other yeah, stuff. Wait, wait a second, it's the chicken back version, Mo Berg. The chicken, chicken back. back yeah, you, you need to get it like slab wood. I'm, I'm going to make it catch on. I want to get into the vintage catalog of baseball cards as the chicken back version. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have how many are in that club? How many chicken back cards are there out there? Right now, it's a all pop. Arms. Right? We're working on it, but it's a pop <laughs> We're putting feelers on arms. Do you have a card with a chicken back on it? Contact the show. Uh, right. Let us know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and, it, you know, there's a lot of ways to not go broke, right? Just be smart and, and know your budget, right? If you have a budget, you know, I have a budget. Like, if I didn't have a budget, I would have had a Seaver Clemente rookie uh, when I left Chicago, right? So oh, John, I if I didn't have three, John, if I didn't have three kids, I'd have a smile and a better collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. it. Too late now. Can't yeah. put the genie back in the bottle. Trust yeah. me, I watched enough. I watched enough. I dream a genie to know that and bewitch. Yes. Um, r- real quick before we go, Ruben says, "Now that the Moberg has been captured, what's next?" Yeah, um, a pleasure. Yeah, Ruben, I'm on, I'm on a little bit of an of an undervalued Hall of Fame rookie run. Um, I got the 57 Frank Robinson. Uh, I think Jim Palmer's 66 is undervalued. I think that the 69 Reggie is undervalued. So, uh, not we'll, we'll see what I can find. Uh, and you, you, I mean, I'm I'm you, you've said, talked about this yourself, 57 Brooks. Um, a, another card that, for whatever reason, at the Astros. Yeah. Huh? And the 57 you United. Just, yeah, you just didn't run into a deal, and that happens sometimes. You just got to you gotta grin and bear it and kind of pivot. And, and you know, like for me, I had Seaver Clemente at the top of my list. That didn't work out. I just pivoted to, to Gibson, Kaline, and Robinson, right? So, and I'm happy. You know, I had a great time. We, we did dinners, met people. I mean, that's... That's what uh, the national is all about: all the cards, the people, the whole, the whole shebang. And uh, you know, I stayed within my budget, right? I, I talk about spending money you don't have. I wasn't willing uh, to necessarily do that uh, at that particular time. So I only you, know, you never know. You never know, right? We got this show, or I got this show coming up September 10th. Who knows what walks up to the table and someone? You know, I've gotten. And I've done a lot. Of, I've done shows since 1987. I've gotten some, you know, I've got people who bring up cards to the to the table, and I, I pick out a few. And hey, what do you want? And they're like, comps are 300. I'd like to get 300. And I'm like, okay, where do I come in? You know. And then I have other times where, you know, they're like, hey, look, the, there's two, you know, two grand comps. You know, give me eleven, eleven hundred. It gives you room to. So you know, you never know what deal you will run across. And I think maybe that's a good way too to kind of wrap it up is to to be patient, right? Don't don't be impatient. I think that's where you get in trouble and can go broke if you're in impatient. You know, if I was impatient with a Clemente Seaver, I might have just paid five hundred dollars over comps. Would I have it? Sure. Would I have buyers, you know, sort of buyers regret remorse, you know, a week or two after when I realized I could have saved some money? Sure. Um, you know, so you got to you got to be disciplined. You got to, you know, you got to be uh, think a little bit, you know, uh, you know, past the moment, so to speak. But buy what you like, buy within your budget and you'll never be upset. 
you know, this this is not how to invest in cars. That was not tonight's show. Uh, this, no, this, is, no. this is not an investment special. This this is this is for buying. I would say more for your PC. Uh, yeah, the point? you just hear point? you hear. Listen, you hear horror stories, right? I kind of told mine. You know, we're, we're running up a, a 10k credit card. Uh, thankfully, that don't, that's in the rearview mirror, but it happened. And I don't. I'm not. I'm. I talk about it because maybe I can help someone else not be in that predicament. You know, and uh, was it fun when I was in it? Uh, uh, because when you owe ten grand on new wax, right? It, it, you're not buying stuff you really want to buy until you kind of dig out of that hole and and level the ground, and then okay, I'm okay again. So you know, if anyone can, if I by telling that story for me, you can help someone else. Why why not tell it, right? And I'm a guy that will share the the W's and the L's, right? Because no one's undefeated. No one is undefeated in this hobby. I don't care what they say. On their on their podcast, you know, or every week they come on and like, I won again, I won again, I won again, right? Uh, they're not Rocky Marciano, they're yeah. not undefeated, so uh, don't buy that. As I always ask that per if I ever have that person on the show, I always ask them like, I hear all the wins. Tell me about some a uh, time where you didn't win. You know, I put them on the I put them uh, right on the, the hot seat. So well, I think on that note, John. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to take everybody off the hot seat. We're going to say thank you. Um, this was cool. I think I think just for, you know, these are a lot of the questions and the conversations we have off air is really just buying our own stuff and how we're doing it and what we're doing. And so I think we just wanted to share some of this for everybody. Yeah, and, 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 and I got to say a lot of great comments uh, in the chat room on, on strategies and different things yep. you can do, right? And there's stuff we didn't even talk about that are, are viable strategies too, right? We just we covered as, as much as we could. Again, great comments. I say it every week. We appreciate you. Whether you're watching live, guys, or you're catching this show on podcast form uh, after the fact, either way, you're giving up your time, and uh, we appreciate that. And, yes, uh, you know, uh, we appreciate that. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Stay safe. Uh, be well. And, uh uh, we'll see you. We you want us? To, uh, we may not be on. Yeah. On okay. Friday. So go ahead. Two two weeks from from we're recording this live on Friday night. Two weeks from tonight is actually the first uh, night of Rosh Hashanah. So card mentions will not air live on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, we will actually air the night before uh, on Thursday. So that is the plan right now is to be live on Thursday at nine, just uh, to clean up the housekeeping. Thank you for the reminder, John. Yeah, I just remembered that, and obviously we would let people know before that anyway, but just for those listening, just to keep in mind, the next time you see the show, it will be on a weirder, not the normal Friday, it'll be yes. on the, the Thursday. And I'll make Rosh Hashanah dinner, Mom, I told you I promised. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> it's a thirsty, it'll be a thirsty Thursday at some capacity. So. It, it always is. All right, my friend, <laughs> have a good one. I will see you Thanks, uh, everybody. in the green room. Thank you, everyone.